and welcome the person to church. Hallelujah. You can ask them what their expectation is for today. Hallelujah. You need to come alive.
Lord of Lords, you are great and mighty King. Oh Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord of Lords, you are great and mighty King. Oh Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord of Lords, you are great and mighty King. Oh Lord, we lift your name on high. Lord of Lords, you are great and mighty King. Lord of Lords, you are great and mighty King.
say I will worship Get up before and lift your voice Sing I will I will not be silent Sing I will I will worship Jesus stones will not worship him in your place no one is gonna take your place in worship and praising God somebody excited about your God give him praise this morning he is worthy Mighty God, we serve. I would like you to turn to the person by your left and your right and welcome them to church. Tell them you are welcome to the presence of God. You're going to be blessed. Praise the Lord. What a joy. <laughs> smile to someone and smile. Just yes, smile with your nice teeth. <laughs> your destiny helper could be standing right by your side, you know. 
Don't take it for granted. That smile can be a million dollar check right now. You can even ask them what they do. And you can tell them, I am, I'm looking for a job. But I am this and that. Plus on top, I'm a child of God. Anointed. I'm like, Joseph, I can handle your business for you. Give the Lord a big clap offering and, and praise you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we're grateful unto you. What a mighty God you are. You are a dear father, a loving father to us. This morning we have come before you. We know your word is blessed and anointed to bless us. Thank you for touching us. We open our heart to receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Last week we started a series on those who harm the church, part one and two. In this service we are talking about those who harm the church, part three. It's our month for loyalty. <clears throat> and so we are studying on loyalty. Praise the Lord. I'd like us to read Acts chapter 2, verse 17. <clears throat> Act 2, 17 is a very powerful test that we have used for many things. But this morning, the Spirit of the Lord would have us look at it from another dimension. He said... And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Please take your seat. Nice. Those who harm the church, part three, loyalty. Loyalty is an important topic in every facet of life, ministry life, family life, career life, if you are into business entrepreneurship. Whatever you find yourself doing, it is important that you find an environment where loyalty can thrive. Many people don't do well because they have competent people around them. Many things blossom because the people around are loyal and available. <clears throat> a competent criminal is a disaster. And it doesn't matter how great your product and plan is. When the runners are not faithful, it will crash. Because there is an enzyme in a man... That makes the man to destroy anything that has a potential to become great. And it takes loyalty to take another man's business as your own business. And run it like the way it ought to be run. For God, for country, for man, and for self. So, when we take the element of loyalty out of everyday life. What we have is an opportunistic society and individuals who don't care about how things should function in a balance, but are self-centered, greedy, and cannot make anything work. <clears throat> Most issues governments have in especially Africa are issues that have to do with people who are not loyal to the plan, to the vision. I don't think any continent has got better vision verbally spelled out than African presidents. African presidents, African politicians are detailed. They have vision. When you hear the grammar around it, it's very lofty, beautiful, and yet when they assemble their men, <clears throat> they are more of destroyers than builders. And it doesn't matter how strong you are as a leader, when your men are not loyal, you are going nowhere. 
You need loyal people. Praise the Lord. And loyal people are not just born. Because you are not born with loyalty. <laughs> you are taught to be loyal. And uh, for loyal people to multiply, individuals must be loyal. That's why we are talking about loyalty. Praise the Lord. The, go the work of God will also suffer when people in church don't understand loyalty. Now, the scripture we read <clears throat> brings us to a dispensation when Jesus had physically left the earth dimension. And he said that when I go, I will send the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he is going to do what I would have done if I was still here. So Jesus came. He was the embodiment of the kingdom of God. So he was teaching the kingdom. Teaching everybody. Everything was inside Jesus and he was distributing it you know, to the disciples over time. Are you here? Are you sure you're here with me? So they stayed with him for, for so many years. He spent 33 years here. He used about three years. I don't know when he started calling the disciples though, but he was there with them for a short time to impart the kingdom ideologies to them and to make them go in a particular way. So, in Jesus' time, like every other time, Moses' time and all of that, it was an individual driving every other person. It was, if, it, if his business would say it was a sole proprietorship. But he told them, he said, when I go, I will send the spirit. And when the spirit comes, he will come on all of you at once. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Wouldn't you smile to me? He will come on all of you at once. So in Acts chapter 2 verse 17, he said, And it shall come to pass in the last days. Say the last days. He said, we are in the last days. He said, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. All flesh. So the last days are days of teamwork. They are days of what? There are days of teamwork. He said, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see vision. And your daughters um, shall see vision. Your old men shall dream dreams. So these are the, this is the dispensation of teams. And so for us to, that's why when the spirit came, it came on all those who were in the upper room. And when they went out, they could all do miracles. Teams, everybody say teams. When we are in a dispensation of teams, you cannot be thinking individualistic. And for you to function in a season where God has, you know, determined that it should operate with teams, you need to know how to function within a group of people working together to achieve a common goal. If you are in a season of teams and you think, as an individual who doesn't have synergies and connections on how to just flow. Like you read the Bible, it talks about the fact that we are so much implanted in the season of teams that he said that we are the members of the body of Christ and every joint must supply at the same time. Every joint, say every joint, must supply at the same time. So, this is the season of teams. That's why you see that anyone who tries to think that he is special fails. In this particular season. Before he can be most a stretching rod. But these days, you know, many people can stretch rod. <laughs> and the rest he will open. Because it's a season of teams. Praise the Lord. So, there is a possibility for all of us to be in a team and we have the same level of competence and yet one person has to be our leader. So, when your level of competence is at par with your leader or even sometimes superior to your leader and you don't have a mind of being a good team player, you are going to become a problem to the team. Are you with me? 
So one way to function properly in a team, in a group, in a fellowship, in an organization, is to imbibe the spirit of loyalty. And that loyalty makes you committed, faithful to God, to church, to pastor, to your line leader, and in business, it makes you loyal, first of all, to the organization, the vision of the organization, the leader of the organization, hello, <clears throat> and to your um, ethical <laughs> um, issues that you have to deal with as a worker. Because if you are working for someone and the person is legitimate and you are not loyal to the person, to their vision and to the organization, you find out that you are a marketer. When you go to town, you use 50% of the time to do your personal business and 50% of the time to do the company's business. And it will affect your productivity. You will be paid for what you are not working for. And so you need to be loyal. Tell somebody to be loyal. <clears throat> Ask somebody, did the pastor say something wrong? <clears throat> it's like pastor says something. Something that you were planning to do. And, and the Holy Ghost has revealed it to pastor. He just said it. So ask them, what are you going to do? Man. So to be able to function in a team, you really need to be loyal. Praise the Lord. The church is God's vehicle for bringing souls to heaven. Last week, we learned about a man who did not have the ideals of a loyal person. And his name is Doeg. Doeg became a killer of priests. Killer of God's people. God's work. When God's people are killed, God's work suffers. So, we should teach how we will not be like Doeg. But rather... People who are loyal to God, who protect the work of God and build the work of God. So, among the many things we said last week was the fact that Doeg, in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 7, he became disloyal when King Saul decided to promise them. He said, then Saul said unto his servant that, that stood about him. Here now, ye Benjamite, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards, vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and uh, captains of hundreds? Verse 8. That all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that showed me that my son has made a league or a covenant with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that is sorry for me or show it unto me that my son has stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. <clears throat> and look at this guy. Then answered Doeg, the Edomite, which was set over the servant of sword and said, I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech, the son of Ahitab, the priest. From there, Saul invited all the priests and Doeg was called to kill all of them when the soldiers had refused a direct order to kill. <clears throat> the families of the priests were 85 in number. One person killed all of them. These were men of God. These were people of God. You see, we can be in church and kill God's people, God's work, and it will look like a routine life of innocence. If you are not careful, you will be a killer of God's work, killer of God's business, killer of God's people, and you don't even see it. That's why we have to preach about Brother Doeg. Because there is an animalistic nature in him. Being the, you know, head, head, chief headsman, he's almost become like one of those animals. And he had the tendency of killing without even blinking. Yes. You are called to do something that soldiers are trained to do. They say they won't do. 
and you do it with joy. <clears throat> one person. One man. Killer of priest. Ask somebody. Tell somebody, I hope you will not become killer of priest. You know, and I told you that God's people, we are royal priesthood. Yeah? So, you are not even looking at just Pastor Francis. You are looking at every child of God who stands before God as a royal priest for Christ. And the work that has been committed unto us. Anytime you damage a child of God, you are damaging the purpose of God here on earth. Because when a man dies without fulfilling his purpose, that purpose gets unfulfilled until God decides to use other means to bring that purpose to fulfillment. Because the man's life was cut short. So, Dweg became the Lord. Once Saul gave promises, he said, who amongst you, this son of Jesse, has he promised you lands and vineyards and has he promised to make you captains of thousands and hundreds? This loyalty has a way of starting. Dweg was in the temple where David was talking to the priest, he, was, he had an exposure to high level communication between the people of importance. And Bible says God had detained him in the presence of God. So God will put you into spaces. He will put you in the midst where people are, you know, talking about sensitive things, crucial things. Pastor will draw you closer, you know, and you will know some things. What do you do with those information? When your boss draws you closer and shows you the next plan, do you do, you know, America, they have a word they call espionage, right? Is it espionage? It's just, yeah, so do, do you sell information to people who use it to destroy than to build? Is it when you find yourself in realms of leadership, is, it, is everything you see there or hear there that you should talk about? When your boss takes you to a meeting, then they are writing deals. And you come. You know, every day you say you and your boyfriend, you have a rundown session. <clears throat> that cannot be part of your rundown session. Let office information stay in office. Let leadership information stay there. Hello? It's not, David told the priest, he said, the king, even though it was not true, he said, the king has sent me on a business, he said, I should not let anybody know. So even you, the priest, I'm not telling you. <clears throat> it's not every business around you inform people about. And if you are informing people, please check who you are informing. <clears throat> The reason why some of us can never be used in high level leadership or you will not be allowed in high level place where human beings operate. Which kind of people? Because you can be operating in the pit for a very long time. Not for lack of opportunity. But because your heart is not right. Or you have not developed the skill to be discretional. Some people have got verbal diarrhea because you are always menstruating in your brain. Oh. Did I say that in church? <laughs> your pastor needs repentance. Everybody stretch forth your hands. Pray for pastor. God, let our pastor. Brain is not working. <clears throat> promises. Small promises. You know, when generous people promise you. Small. So just said, I'm promising you vineyards. I've already promised you vineyards. <clears throat> promises. You hear promise, I will marry you. Nah, you lick him for. <clears throat> you know? You just lick him for. Spoil everything that has been built over years. Promise vineyards. You say, uh, captains of thousands, hundreds. Are you with me? When you have opportunity to increase your status. Someone promises you and then you feel like it's going to change my life. Nah, then nah, you start gossiping and saying things. Hey, 
You move from one company to another company. You go and draw their pant. But God, God gave you that job for two years. Those two years, he saved your mother's medical bills. Your child was sick. The salary. You see, God is not stupid. When things, when you are transitioning from one place to another, and even if things went wrong, see the wisdom of God for putting you there and how he has blessed you there. Take the positives. Leave the negatives. People like to, you see, you leave a political party, come and leak information here. <clears throat> They're snitching around every time. Like, you leave, you see, sometimes it's not even... You leave a church, a church that God has used to keep you for whatever it is. There is information we use to learn, and there is information we use to destroy. You have to be able to separate the two. Praise the Lord. There is a reason why the priest garment is from the neck to the to a trifum. The material should be dragged on, on the floor. Because you must not see the scars of the priest. Now, if you are opportune to be closer to the priest and he wears short, he wears some t-shirt and you see the scars, it's an opportunity to be in a space the public is not given opportunity to be in. So you don't go and tell the people about the scar. Oh, this priest cry, he has some scar be here, some tattoo be there. Hey, la 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 la, that is damaging. Who sent you? You know, and it's so bad that some people, when they break up with some ladies, even marriage, when marriage breaks up, then you see the man will be describing some part of the lady to Charlie. We're crazy. <clears throat> And you need to damage somebody to enter into someone else's life. Why? Ask somebody why. Charlie, you have shared a, a love relationship with your fiancé for one year. And I did not answer. A pastor. Charlie. So the world must come to an end for the person. It's like you have info, inside info. I'm going to use to damage you. Some of you even threaten the person that as I'm living your life, nobody will be able to. You will see what I will do. I will write to you on social media a letter and telegraph it to you. We are crossing it. Bar. <clears throat> so, it is important that when God gives you an opportunity to operate in a certain realm and you know, you become discretional. Wisdom dictates that you must be loyal. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Is it powerful? So, Dweck, once he had promises, the guy just started leaking information. Oh, I saw David in the church. <clears throat> and with that disloyalty, we said that it blossoms with a desire to kill innocent people to attain power and heights in life. Just that desire. You know, so, we have to be careful what we say when we have access into certain spaces and with certain people. Praise the Lord. Are you here with me now? <laughs> In verse 7, I want you to look at that verse again because the, I was studying the verse again. I realized that the Bible said, Then Saul said unto his servant that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites. Which people was he talking to? <clears throat> I can't hear you. Benjamites. But Doeg in verse 9. Please let's look at verse 9. Then answered Doeg the Edomite. Was he a Benjamite? And yet one more cry. He's talking to Benjamite. An Edomite has raised hand. Uninvited guest. Strange person. Miss multitude. So. 
Saul was addressing the Benjamite. And though a servant of Saul, Dweg was an Edomite. He wasn't a Benjamite. He was just addressing Benjamite. Now, this is very serious. Look at verse 22. Verse 22. I'm, I'm beginning to love the teaching. In verse 22, when Abiata, the only priest who escaped, met David and told David that, look, Saul has killed all the priests using dweg to kill all the priests. David said unto Abiata, I knew it that day when dweg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul. I, he's a strange guy. I knew it that day. So from that day, David started running, never looking back because he knew that that guy was too strange in that space. David knew that there was something strange about the work. You see, in the church, in every organization, we always have to be careful about strange characters in our midst. We have to be careful about which kind of people? Strange characters in our midst. And here, the strange characters are not necessarily persons, but also behaviors. Because you can have a strange character in a person. That person is an embodiment of foolishness. It's an embodiment of disloyalty. It's an embodiment of vulnerability. Once he is there, you are exposed. Nothing can be protected. Can you imagine? Pastors were meeting together praying. And they said everyone should bring their trouble. <clears throat> their weaknesses. One said, I've been stealing from the church's offering. I count five for God. I collect one. Another said, <laughs> the young girls in the church have been sleeping with them, including the pastor's daughter. So that is also my challenge, immorality. Another one also says something. <clears throat> then they said, okay, let us pray for ourselves. And one of them said, he to his weakness is that whatever he hears, you know, he must go and tell. So even these things that he has heard in this prayer meeting, you know, by all means, the next thing you know the next morning is that it's in the news because it's, it's breaking this is major content this is organic content i'm going to do a live stream and i'll be telling them i'm saying it's a pastor the pastor the pastor the senior pastor to say he has been sleeping with the widows in the church she said i'm going to be good sorry no see me to my weakness is that whatever i hear they were begging him. He said, let's pray and go. Let me go and do my ministry. Yeah, child, I need to go and tell. Strange person. Please be mindful of strange people in our midst. Praise the Lord. In your marriage, be mindful of strange people in your space. In your work, in your office. Strange people. Strange. Sometimes a strange behavior. When some people start behaving in a way. When David saw Dweg, he said, I knew surely that this guy will go and tell. See, when all of us are going in a certain direction, and one person or few people are going in a different direction, it's a great sign of disloyalty. Because disloyal people are independent spirited people. They always feel they know something better or their power is in redrawing from the way the rest of the people are going. Strange people. Strange behaviors. You go for a meeting and disloyal person will always have a you always have an excuse. 
But the real Benjamite did not respond to the manipulation and evil schemes of King Saul. King Saul really wanted to kill David. He faced the Benjamite and he said, Charlie, you guys, all that I have done for you, is that, is that how you are going to treat me? They didn't respond. Real Benjamite. You will see that the difference between Dweck, the strange people in our midst, who behave anyhow, and the real church members, the real team players, is that real team players, real church members, real employees, don't respond to manipulative schemes to destroy. You see that? It's planning with you that there's a loophole here, we can collect cash. It's not responding. He won't respond. It's a church member. He's just, you know, one, one of our instrumentalists in another branch. The church took him to school. I'm talking about tertiary education. Paid his tertiary education till he finished tertiary. This keeper's house in one of the branches. When he finished school, paid he started doing pintain, pintain with the pastor. Because he saw himself as a professional uh, whatever instrument he plays. You know, so he said the church, you know, the play level, you know, it's not, it's not to his level. <clears throat> Cash. Cash. So, he, he started messing up the heads of all the instrumentalists. Then he started going into the instrumentalists, messing up the head of keyboardists, this one, that one, and then somebody sent a message to the pastor from a, a telephone conference call recording. The guy said, make no come church. Make no come church early. Make no come church. Pastor, now you go no say will be important. You may go go me and I go come. Dweck. Strange, you see, strange mindset. So for make the pastor no say, we are the ones who the control things for you. Dweck. So when the thing now passed, he had influenced some of them. We lost one keyboardist. Together with him and blah, blah, blah. Long and short. He's gone into something, something. I like something that Pastor George said some time ago. You know, even though he sees himself as a professional instrumentalist, Reverend George says that Hello. Come on now. Hello. Somebody was telling um, you know, some of the singers were lost here. They felt like who controlled them. Like, yeah, they come and watch it. And some people still have that mind. So, they are trying on their own. Yeah, make I find my own path. If what we are doing here is in Kanshe, eh? it's a blessing. Hey, for example, we have recording artists here in this church. If we use our music manager alone, one, yeah, he has a feature with your metal. One, he has a feature with Ernest Abebe. He has a feature with Kobe Mante. He has a feature with Timmy Tenet. 
He has a feature with emoji. Five. Who are young Kawan Shano? We peer with him. So, we peer with him. If, 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 we peer in a young peer, young Gandhi, I met an unconscious. You, sometimes people are not content with the blessings of God they have in a family. If somebody can be here crying, wishes that I was born by this man. Hey! Because you don't like the, the way your mother's forehead is. Look at someone say, everybody say, crying. Strange people. Strange. Very strange people. So, every time, I mean, for us to be able to build a team and achieve our goals, we have to be looking out for strange characters, strange mindsets, strange philosophies. Very strange. Very strange. Some people, once they get closer to some other people, you see that they are changing. Something strange is happening. So that was Dweck. Real members, real Benjamin, they follow a mission. They achieve it. Real Christians and members of a mission of Christ don't follow human manipulations. That build comes for destroying the work of God. You see that Saul was building a camp to destroy the work of God. And Dweg followed Saul. Influencer. Saul was an influential man. And there will be influential people in church, in your team, if you are not careful. You know, they just begin to manipulate people to destroy the whole mission of the team. May God deliver us from it in Jesus' name. Say, I will not be used. I will not be used. Now, look at verse 8. Why do I talk about influential people? You know, Saul, being an influential person, said that all of you have conspired against me and there is none that showed me that my son has made a league with the son of Jesse. And there is none of you that is sorry for me. Manipulation. When he said none of you is sorry for me, now then I dwell, felt sorry for Saul. Disloyalty blossoms <laughs> when powerful and influential people make you feel sorry for their plight. You see, a mother is talking to the children to feel sorry about her plight. The children don't want to see their father again. A father is talking to the children to see his plight against the mother. And once they feel sorry for the father, they see their mother as a witch. He said, none of you is feeling sorry for me in this choir, in this testimony class. You are not feeling sorry that up until now, I have not been given a song to lead. Well, you have not feeling sorry for me. And meanwhile, when we meet, you know, I am the one who cook for you. You know, sometimes I even bring you drinks, snacks, and I'm doing all that. And you have not felt sorry. I don't know if I, am I preaching? It blossoms when powerful and influential people makes, make you feel sorry for their plight. I see something bad is happening. You know, I was sick and nobody from the church visited me. We are not spirit. I'm telling you. Are, are we spirit to know that you ask, we don't have an app in the hospital that tells us, King Guy, keep us as member has been admitted. Blah, blah. You have to tell us. In your workplace, when you are unwell, you are the one who informs the workplace. How would they know? Then sometimes you can entrap us. You know? Entrap us. You are not happy, then you have redrawn to see how we will react. I did temptation cry.
Then when we don't react based on your expectation, then you start influencing people around you. You know, you have to feel after serving pastor for all these years. Look at this. What do I get from it? Even small sickness, I seek. It didn't show up. <laughs> wow. By the time you know, someone has sold their plight to you. And that is a manipulation that begins to make you raise hand that no, so then I will fight with you. To the point when Saul said, let soldiers kill the priest. And the soldier said, we are not killing. Dweg, who was sorry for Saul, he killed all of them because he was too sorry. I told you the last time that when people see that you have stupidities, it's a sickness. And foolishemia, stupidities, foolishemia. It's a sickness that people look at you and they see that you have a certain level of stupidity and foolishness that they can explore to their own advantage. They enter and sell you a poison to make you go and fight them. Why didn't Saul kill the priest himself? Could he not have killed them? I saw the foolish area in the work. And the stupidities. He said, this guy, he will catch the virus. Many people there never caught one person. May you not be the one person. That somebody will see that all these manipulations that are not working anywhere will work on you. May you not be that one person. That amen is not coming out at all. Bible says, woe unto you. Send them to suicide. Woe unto you. I say, anyone who start buying you into their fight, he has seen that you have a certain level of foolishness. That's why they sell their battles to you to fight. Say, God have mercy. I can't hear. They know they know they can. They know they have bought fifty percent of your mind. The shares they they have bought. Yeah, just by just giving you a car or a promotion, nah, they have bought you, boy. Some of you, your bosses can tell you the issues they have with their wife. Uh, when you see their wife, you give them attitude. A wife who worked with your boss to set up the company. And that company is paying you. The two of them, when they met, you were not there. They chopped their love, you were not there. They were fighting, you were not there. Now you have been told, so you are feeling the position of importance. That because of your stupidity, you, you have not even kept that message on a drive, inactive hard drive. You have kept it as the primary hard drive for your PC. And when you see the woman who put it in anywhere, not you also need she when you she when you she. You know, there's a way that church people get comfortable talking to people and all of that. So someone will now tell you their family issue here and there, blah, blah, blah. We cannot watch us here misbehaving to people's spouses, people's workers, people, whatever. You, it's, it's this bitterness that you have, eh? Let's pray. Hello? Well, we are here to serve God. Something has gone wrong small. We want to burn the whole house. Hey, this is a house of salvation. <laughs> we can't burn the whole house. Not every pastor is as ethical as Pastor Francis. Hello? Not every pastor. I told you, some of the people who sing with me, that sometimes you feel they are so privileged. Tanzi was living very close to my house. I could even walk from my house to her house. One or two times that I, I took her to drop her, I even refused to enter the house. Okay, this is your gate. Oh, yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. The slow, they can't say it. But they are. <laughs> God have mercy. <laughs> Pastor has said it. Please help them. Please help them. Do I felt sorry? In verse 10, look at verse 10. Verse 10. 
Verse 10, the Bible said, and this is Doeg speaking. He said, please, let's read from verse 9 so that you, you get it. Doeg is reporting to King Saul that he met David with Ahimelech, the priest. And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law? And goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. Who? Who surpasses him? Next verse said, did I then begin to inquire of God for him? He said, be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. I didn't inquire of God for him. He needed bread. I gave him bread. He needed a sword or a spear. I said, Goliath own is there. You killed him. You can take it. Never prayed for him. Never inquired of God for him. But look at what Dweck said. Dweck said, I saw him there. And the priest prayed for him. Inquired of God for him. Anointed him. Gave him a contract how he can win you. That's why the king said, hey, you conspired. Because to Dweck, you see, and disloyalty, it blossoms when you have an assumptive mindset. He assumed that once David met the high priest, the, the priest, the priest would inquire of God for him. He just assumed. So without the practical, you know, reality of the priest inquiring of God for David, he had always, he had already by prejudice assumed that priest, you know, hey, I can't remember. So Saul at that time was saying that I'm not able to arrest this guy to kill this guy because you, you have spiritually fortified him. Meanwhile, the priest said, I didn't do. And if you read chapter 21, he didn't do that. Where did Dweg saw the priest inquiring of God for David? In church, eh, it's not everything you see resembles something that is practically happening. You see two people always walking. You say they by now, no, they are sleeping. No, they are cousins. Just cousins. Cousins. Because you, you cannot be in a room or in any kind of relationship with an opposite sex without the kumkales happening. So anybody at all you see getting close by anything now, uh, no, by my weakness standard, you know, it's happening. And a pastor de jaw muna sanko for your mutti that the domuna or we be jina or twin man away bog guitar mano. So I need an atmosphere and I am polluted. Upwa, we are never born. What about we are saying? Assumption. Assumptions. It's got one or one so I want to know. I'm not going to be Assumptions. You know, I'm not going to be born. I'm not going to be born. Can you stop a mouth from talking when they have had sex? You can. One man of God said, if you're a pastor, you don't want your cover to be blown and you have sexual drives, look for a tree, look for a goat. If you sleep with a human being, they will say it. Oh, one day, sir, it will come for morning flavor. Anointing will come on the sister. Over time, say make a 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 pass. I'm busy make a. Me will be be I'm busy make a catch you. No my ear free. I swear me watch it. Yeah. Can I mean you free? Holy Ghost convicting God for pen. No more person. I'm a cow. You look for a tree. The the wind will blow you to be doing like this. Not a talk. You're always having assumptions. Dweck is always having assumptions. 
there's pre preferential treatment here. You know, this person that is blah, 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 is a gossip. He's the one who is always gossiping to this person, gossiping to that one. Da, 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 da. So people are not free. The whole system has been controlled by our assumptions. And when, you know, your assumptions always create a narrative. And sometimes, and try in the crescent. Yeah. Some people, the way they are crafty, they can create it a basis here. You would think it's happening. It's a mirage. There is no object in there. It's just a shadow. It's similitude. It's in the form. Similar to the truth. What do you mean? We will five minutes. We like and when the devil is helping you hey, I bind the spirit of assumptions here you have seen the brother Charlie some pastors they struggle to marry on time oh maybe he night they get some they chop that's why you know you know I'm married Everyone doesn't have the sexual drive you have. Oh. You know your hormonal balance, no, eighty-five percent is in your waist. <laughs> so every time you want to just gyrate, not not everybody has that kind of a thing. Some people, as we are here, we have to pray for them to have some two percent sexual libido. It's not part of the thinking. Every time is assumption. I saw he inquired of the Lord for him. Meanwhile, no, that was the last thing. The priest didn't even think about it. He was even afraid. He said, where are you going? Who has sent you? Where, where are you passing? It is a sign of disloyalty to make simple assumptions in the presence of God and leadership. When you start making assumptions without going to the people consent to clarify or allowing yourself for those assumptions because you can't be here and be an investigative officer. You have become an undercover agent. <laughs> assumptions. When you come to church and the pastor, he wears a jeans that is faded and tattered. I mean, they blow the girls. How? Like, what's the connection between genes and sexual immorality? Assumptions. Assumption will make you believe something that never exists. And you will push it like, you know, it does. Because you, you believe it against what everyone else is. Look at someone say, hey. One day Jesus went ahead, sent his disciples ahead, and he said he was going to reach out to them later. So when he was going, he was walking on the water. And when the disciples saw him from far, they didn't see his face. When they saw him, the Bible says that they thought he was a ghost. They assumed it was a ghost. And Jesus said, I'm not a ghost. Once you start assuming, assume, assumption, assumption can be so crazy that as I'm preaching right now, Devil can be helping you to be assuming that somebody has told Pastor my matter. <laughs> so instead of opening your heart to receive the word, you become political in that seat. You know, you're fine. Internet, maybe, I mean, Chawa, Sorbiano. Oh, no, Marco, come as a match, let's off one. And uh, because you saw that the person was standing with me on Saturday and we were talking, but your assumption is that we were discussing you. You got to be bigger than God. That 
Do you know when I woke up to pray for this service? I left here late last night. I went to sleep small, woke up around three, started praying, 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 praying. So I'm praying to prepare a message for you. You. One person. All the other people here don't matter. Only you. Hey. Charlie, Charlie, my Jamaica, no. Many of you. Uh, what, what does it mean? Some of these are more kind than this. Some of these are more kind Assumptions. I'm assuming that it is the right thing to say at this point in time. Quit. We bind the spirit of assumptions. <laughs> wow. Can have assumptions. When we are preaching, eh, God speaks to us. Utterance. And the preaching must address people. Transform people. Correct people. Some people is reproof. Some is correction, some is a rebuke, some is edification. However it comes to you, I believe God is giving you a word. If God doesn't have a word for you this morning, you won't be here. So when that word comes, you have to have a positive spirit to receive that word and walk in the light of that word. My father used to do that. He used to go to an Anglican church. When he's going, he's already drunk a little. You know, he would drink like 70% after. But he would do the base of 30 and go and listen to the message. And as the priest preaches, you'll be collecting the preaching for somebody in the house. <laughs> you know. You say, uh, I quit any preaching and a priest. So for no preaching, I no pay. I quit any preaching. You are quite terrible to go. When he closes from church, he tops up the 70%. And when he comes... Say so you should have been here this morning. You should have been in the church. It's as if the, 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 the father he lives in this house. <laughs> Collecting a preacher and giving it to somebody. <laughs> Sitting there drunk. <laughs> this lawyer. <laughs> the priest thinks he's preaching to God's children. Oh. Oh, they are taking the preaching Bluetooth telegraph it to whoever it may concern. And about some cranny. The Bible says casting down imaginations. You see, I, the disloyalty, the real vehicle of disloyalty is imaginations programmed from the pit of hell. Assumptions. It's like my wife is cheating on me with this person. It's, it's like I have a feeling. Eh? That thing speaking in your head, eh? it was even there before you married. Long before you married. What do you mean? You have your own insecurities that you should have addressed before marrying. And marrying, it has now become a problem for whoever is there. Charlie? It will, you see, some things, eh, it will be very serious and very, like, difficult to believe if you say, like, this your, your wife, when she was not married, she was not fornicated. With big financial challenges. Now she is married. Home is fine. Now you say she is from the gate. Where is it coming from? Because she's got friends. She's got male friends. So when we marry you now, all the male friends, you sign certificate of severance 
Severance package. Yeah, we'll be thousand dollars and then we know we 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 Charlie, we have come far from small, small people God used. Some male female friends to your husband. Some of them don't have any mind of doing any bad thing. You now you have assumed that sometimes you are coming from very b- bad relationships. Where the whole relationship is like Sodom and Gomorrah. When you now meet human beings who want to be in a relationship with you, you bring that baller into this real life. Your mind no need some bleaching powder to clean it because the mind is not correct. When you are under pressure small, you think somebody wants to do assumption, it makes you misbehave. You know? And it can be in the church. It can be in the church. This this pastor here, when we were in the university, we used to sleep in my flat many days. Herself, some other girls, myself, some other boys, sometimes me and her sleeping, bang bed, up, down, somewhere on the floor. Sometimes it's she and other people. That time, where he blood day hot, <laughs> nothing happened. Now that the blood has been diluted, <laughs> diluted by time, <laughs> by childbirth, they say, I will be happy. Hey. Hey. hey, what are you saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> Charlie. When we had the opportunity to fool, we didn't fool. Oh. Now that we have come into Christ, it's when we want to abide. Ah, we are in darkness. We didn't enter the baller. We are in light. Now is what are we going? What, what are we even looking for? Hello? We didn't know the light. The well didn't enter our heart. Now we are in the light. You say darkness has taken over. Ah, bah. Not every fine boy is interested in foolish things. Not every fine girl. Charlie, some people like they are dressing more than they are even education certificate. But it does not mean immorality. Stop your assumptions. Some people, when you see their face, you can see that this guy now quaffa. You know a quaffa? Or butcher fish a dance you. Men so on fire cough or grand can and nimness or buffo. That's why change your mind. Change your mind. You will spoil the church if you don't change your mind. Hey. Charlie, when we started this church, <laughs> two times in the, in the heat of the doom, so those of you who were here from the beginning. So we'll be doing church service at uh, the light of free. By the time maybe 10 minutes, the light come on. Somebody's phone is gone. I'm telling you, it's like magic. Two times. Now, there's a brother here. Isaac. We used to, we'll call him Don. Those of you know Don. When Don, Don Juan, when Don came to the church, he was sleeping. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm preaching this or I'm doing comedy here. He used to sleep in some uncompleted building somewhere around Jifanko area. When we went for evangelism, I remember he said, uh, Sally, who evangelized down, down to church. The day he was coming, in his some wild, radical jeans with some, chale, his best shirt, but very wild. Then he wore glasses. You see the glasses that the blind people wear? <laughs> very dangerous. So he wore that uh, one thing that the, I desire. <laughs> Only this I see. That, that kind of spectacle. Dark for an evening service. <laughs> Very dangerous. Big, dark, dangerous. You know, these days, you know, <laughs> these days, you know, when you see Don, you know, he, he, he's a guy. 
you know, he has cars, <laughs> he's driving his Uber, he, he has food to eat, he's rented, he, he's taking care of family, but you should have seen him when he came. He looked like a Thai. <laughs> so I'm telling you about assumptions. So in those days, and when he came, he, he would not pay you my kind of person. Area boy. So, he just entered into the workforce. You know. So, when these phones would disappear, because the guy looked like a criminal. <laughs> All energies <laughs> went towards dawn. No. Ah, and you see, his movement too, looked like Naimi the thief. He was here, but by the time we are looking for the phone, we can't find. He's the one who is not around. So maybe Chale, we are balancing our balance. Do you understand? Is he seeing it? First one, yeah, the share no. Be anxious. Second one, because he's an area boy, he knew where people who steal phones sell it. So, I remember they stole one person's phone now. He was here when he was told. He said, wait for me. 30 minutes, he brought the phone. When he came, then he said that this person stole the phone and sold it. Not knowing one of the very charismatically looking prayerful guys. When the guy is talking, you think he's his Tudanaba. He has crammed all the popular Sudanaba quotation scriptures and he's leading prayer here and all of that. Criminal! <laughs> Not knowing naive be the one balancing the act. But he really looked like a prophet. Very prayerful guy, but a tifri day in blood. Assumption fitted the face of a radical poor guy. It was nowhere near a thief. And the guy was sitting in front, stealing phones. If you walk with assumptions, you will displease God. You would, the Bible says, don't call unclean. What God says is clean. When someone is not a thief, you now go and say, You're a thief. Because his face and his appearance looks like that. Abba, take it easy. This church, we can be everything, but one of the things we are not is that we are not going to hell. <laughs> and we are not leading anybody in sin. When you see individuals who do their own private issues and it doesn't go well, don't say, no, why, sorry, why, sorry, now you want your more, yes. I'm sorry, yeah, 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 I'm asking you, are we in the room with you? We can preach. The Holy Spirit is the agent of change. He has to work on you. Praise the Lord. Sometimes we will have a, a, a church leader who is not doing well in their marriage. And the spouse will be angry with us. That, eh, is he not a, 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 an elder in the church? And look at his misbehaving. What is the church doing? But now we for two. Is it not the Holy Ghost? Please, let's rise. When you have workers who use assumptions, they are going to be disloyal very soon. Assumption can just spoil everything. May the Lord help us. That amen is not strong at all. <laughs> I see God, I, I see God helping us. Has the preaching gone well? That's it. I see the hand of God with you. Praise the Lord. Come on now, praise the Lord. It's too powerful. What kind of prayer do you think we should be praying? 
Bring the prayer topic. Joaz a priest to be a Linda Linda. She must have Linda our address. We could be a Ufi winter more about summer. I quash you too. Why a Fabia? Such a pastor Mosma, Obu Bobu Bolinda, now about an address in Nazan. I had named you a womb. I dream in your papa. I dream in your. I dream in your. Jamie who Linda and Anna Masha as a moose. Maybe Rasa Linda will dress to find me. Some of us, our job is to restructure people's low self-esteem they came to church with. Make them begin to feel self-worth before they enter the job market, before they go to marry. You know the kind of burden we have. When we are hugging people, one sister in this West, you know, one day I just I just hug her. She brought the heat. What is happening? Small hug. You want to bring the rain down? Raised by a single mother. To no father bad. No father. Just, just hug somebody. Say, you are beautiful. You are great. You are going to be fine. On TV. Time be a who? With Jimmy headquarters. Uncle baby. You are a Say, hey. If you saw a mental problem, class, I only mental problem. Hug. Keke. So imagine if pastor doesn't start this, then one guy comes to propose to her and say, Sister A, B, C, D, I love you with all my heart. Nico, Nico, hug like that. The girl go open sesame. Now the Armenian, the Podomie, will be a kind of, but you understand, what, 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 time you know three children with three different people our job is to help people find their identity in Christ we love them we, we care for them we are, we are not afraid if you are afraid to get closer to women me I'm not afraid I don't have the problem you have don't transfer your problem to everybody you know we have a work to do, and we will do that. Me, me, dear, now who's in a gynecologist and gone yet? Do you know the guy? What the guy needs is very fast. I'm calling one. Then you may ask him, Oh, one day you may ask, baby, oh, you're not doing all that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So why do you don't be the slow we are, we are we are we have a mission to accomplish are we, are we blessed clap your hands bless jesus Sing it again. Oh, 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 oh,
Shola Bahasa. Yeshua. Lift your hands, let the instrument play. Father, deliver me from any tendencies of disloyalty. Let me be an integral part of building your work. I will not kill your people, I will not stop your work, I will not damage your work in any way. Give me that wisdom, that grace. Eto kapara so rabakada baha. Ite keni mini kukuta ta ta ta. E rebo koshe rabaka pananda. Endi di bikita rabaka. Pray for the grace to escape this loyalty. That I escape this loyalty. I escape this loyalty. E mere keke shute te repete. Ito rabakule supre kereso. My God, my God, my God. Oh yes. Now pray, Father, through me, let the church grow. Use me to build a church. Give me the resources, financial resources. Through me, let people be added to the church in human resources. Father, use me. Let my human capacity be used. Come on and pray to further the work of the kingdom in the keeper's house establish me establish my goings establish kere matosa apara no ke kopare se itota para daba adule berese sere emparo na pera entore bareso establish me raise your hands and pray father this is my ordained garden let nothing be able to move me away establish my roots Establish me a parasuta paya ito ro pere solepa e te 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 re be 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 re se e tara ba ba sun tara ba atora manda la ba pasa yeah 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 receive establishment receive establishment may you be planted in God. May your spirit come alive. Put your hand on your stomach. Pray. Father, I pray for the fire to be prayerful. Fire to be spiritual. Fire. Give me that fire. I receive that fire. A man to do the bahata. A tere bahata. Let there be fire in my container. Let there be fire in my spirit. Let there be fire in my bones. Let there be fire. E pera sunta laba. E laba basote kereso. Thank you, Father. 
Father, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. I want every eye closed. Please, if you are here, you have not given yourself, your life to Christ. What an opportunity to turn over your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus, I want you to come into my life. Become my Lord and my personal Savior. If you are that person, please raise your hand. I will pray with you. You want to give your life to Christ? Say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. I want Jesus to come into my life. Become my Lord and personal Savior. I want to be loyal to God, the work of God. Loyal to my country, my family. I want to be a great person. But I don't know Jesus. Today, I want Jesus to come into my life. If you are that person, please raise your hand. I'll pray with you. Your life will never be the same again. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Let's welcome our LP. Let's give a better clap ring to the Lord. Hallelujah. So this loyalty blows us on what? Imaginations, assumptions, and emotional manipulation. Amen. All right, Kali, take your seat. All right, if you have your tithe first, we kindly come forward. Any thanksgiving offering, kindly come forward. Tithe first fruit, thanksgiving offerings. All right, whilst we wait for them to come, kindly prepare your offering. Let's lift them up unto the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we activate Ephesians 1 verse 3 yes, to their lives. We pray that all spiritual blessings will be activated yes, in their lives. Any blessing that, you have, that is hanging on your life in the heavenly realms, may it manifest into flesh for you to walk in them and then live in them. In yes. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Can you drop Please, let's, rise. let's rise. Let's rise. Let's rise. Let's rise. Let's celebrate the goodness of the Lord with a dance. Praise. Come on. Let's go. What a blessing. Everybody, come on. Put your hands together. Awesome God. Ah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Awesome God.
never seen your type of Hey, so this guy God oh, blessed be We have the wedding. The LP in charge of weddings is here. He's coming to arrange them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to gazette him very soon to be doing the weddings, you know, <laughs> in a brief moment, Charlie. On the 20th, right? In, in second day, Takrade. It's, it's going to be a wonderful day. This nice gentleman is marrying this pretty lady. The brother is called Seto. The sister is called Diana. Dede for short. Yes. It's, it's, it's too powerful. Please, if you know any reason why these two people should not be married, you come and tell us. No assumptions. <laughs> and uh, what a blessing. I want you to pray for them. They have about a week to go. Pray for them. You support them. Give them money. We are a rich church. Give them money. Support them. And let them have a eureka moment for their marriage. What a joy. So um, that's Diane, that's Seto. Please be praying for them, 20th of April. What a joy. Congratulations in advance. The Lord bless you. Please, you may go back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are April concert, 28th of April. If you, can, if you can give it to us, April concert on the 28th of April. It's going to be powerful. That's the flyer. It's powerful. So we are receiving CC Beidou, MOG Music. Ne is there. Flora is there. Tansy is there. It's going to be super powerful. Don't miss it. It's two Sundays from now, 4.30 in the evening. It's going to be super powerful here. We'll send you the flyer. Invite as many people who block the road. The whole place will be raising praise for God. Praise the Lord. What a blessing it's going to be. So please, we are, we are going to put some billboards out, some flyers. It's going to be super. It's our major music, major music concert for the year. This is April concert. And we thank God that we're able to do something like this for God. Praise the Lord. When, on that day, we'll show you something small. Oh, show them to be powerful. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. If today is your first time of fellowshipping with us, can you wave your hands? It's your first time. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. God bless you for coming. Please, if you came by 8.30, you join the second service. If you came by 8.30, just join the second service. Praise the Lord. You know, join the second service. If you came by 8.30, join the second service. Father, I pray, lift your hands. I release favor upon you. I release anointing upon you. Today is the last day of our fast. I release the anointing, the favor, the blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your glory, let your power come upon your people. May we never return here without a testimony. I pray that doors are opened unto you. You are preserved. Your family preserved and protected. Now declare with me there shall be no loss of life. No loss of health. No loss of property. No loss of opportunity. Say the Lord is with me actively. I go out and I come in in blessings. In Jesus name. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Yeah, would.